Hi folks, in today's lesson we're going to be learning about rotational symmetry. So grab a pen and get ready. First let's go ahead and put your name up at the top and then let's read through some of these words. This says that rotational symmetry it just says um, if you can rotate or turn a figure around a center point by fewer than 360 degrees and the figure appears unchanged. If I immediately think about um, like a flower petal or something like that, maybe a four-leaf clover. Let's do a four-leaf clover over here. Assuming that all the leaves are the same size, I, I did a pretty poor job of making them the same size, but if I rotated this four um, this uh, four petal four leaf clover and I rotated it 90 degrees then um, the petals would be exactly on top of each other so it would look exactly the same. A center of rotation is the point about which you would rotate so there in the middle there would be the center of rotation and let's make it look more like a four leaf clover so that's cute. Angle of rotation, the smallest angle you need to turn. So in this case, uh, the smallest angle would be 90 degrees, but you could also turn this 180 degrees or 270. Okay, so let's take a look at a more confusing picture. Uh, confusing, uh, more dynamic. I, I've already done a four-sided figure, so let's, let's step it up one. Let's go to a five-sided figure. This says that the figure has a rotation of 72 degrees, but how would we have just known that? It says the center of the rotation is just the center of the figure. And then it kind of shows us this little calculation. 360 divided by 5 is 72. I wonder where they got that 5. Well, there are five, one, two, three, four, five. There are five petals. Now, before I said five sides, I, I definitely didn't mean five sides, did I? It says many more sides than that, but as far as like, um, yeah, but you can see the number five. There's five points to the star. So, uh, so that's why you would do the 360 divided by five. So what do you think the, um, Oh, I guess I should mention something that even though the angle of rotation is 72 degrees, um, it's actually um, 72. Now it, it will rota rotate on top of itself 72 degrees. Sorry. Um, the next one might be 144 degrees. It could keep on rotating and go to 216 degrees. 288 degrees and then 360 right so 360 is always going to be on our list so when we get to 360 we actually don't even have to include it in the list but we can definitely stop there so let's go back to our little four leaf clover I mentioned 90 degrees I never wrote down all of its possibilities though so there's 180 degrees there's 270 degrees because I know how to add by 90 pretty well. And then we get to 360. When we get to that spot, we need to stop. Okay. So this one says, do the regular polygons have rotation symmetry? Well, let's look at the word regular just in case that shows up again. Regular means that all the sides are congruent or all the sides, yeah, let's just use the word are congruent. It actually also means that all angles are congruent. So there you have, all angles are congruent. Now what does the word congruent mean? Well, the word congruent means that a transformation can map all the sides on top of each other and a transformation can map the angles on top of each other. Okay? Uh, and when I say a transformation, I mean um, only the isometric transformations. So translation, uh, rotation, or reflection. 
So if they can map on top of each other, the result is all sides and angles have equal measures, but we don't need to go um, into that thought quite yet. But I'm glad that we got to that because that that was come up more than more than once. So anyway, if you have an equilateral triangle, you kind of see um, here's your center of rotation, and we could kind of cut this thing up. So you you got 360 degrees around a circle, but there's three interior angles there. So 360 over three will give us 120. But it's every 120 degrees. So 120, 240, 360. So for a square, we could kind of do the same thing. We have a center of rotation in the center. Well, and then um, we're going to rotate this way. So 360 divided by 4 will give us 90 degrees. A pentagon, same thing. We'll go out to each vertex like this. And you can kind of see that there are five triangles. So if we rotate around this, then that would be 360 over 5, and that will give you that 72 degrees that we had um, in that five-pointed star up above. And then we're going to look at a hexagon, and I think that most of you at this point can see the pattern. If it's a hexagon, it has six sides, and thus six triangles that we could rotate around like this so we're going to just say 360 over 6 and get 60 degrees but remember it's every 60 degrees it's not just 60 so in other words I could rotate this 120 degrees and be on top of itself 120 180 240 300 360 all right so let's keep going here's a CD player and it can hold five compact discs. You see the five discs. Um, does the tray have rotational symmetry? I think so. Yes. Now it says explain. If you rotate uh, you know what, let's just say something like uh, each um, uh, each rotation of 72 degrees uh, makes an identical figure or something like that. Okay, you could you could have a different explanation too, but just make sure it's valid. The tray can move only clockwise, it says. Interesting, the tray can only move clockwise. So from, from the top position, that means right, okay? So um, a CD in position one is currently playing. How many degrees must it rotate to get to three? All right, well, this one's currently playing, so it needs to go to the left twice, doesn't it? So it needs to go to the left twice. So uh, we're going to, this kind of walks us through our calculation. So 360 over 5 is 72 degrees. But then we need to do 72 degrees. We need to do that twice, and we'll get 144 degrees. That is such a fun little problem. Let's take a look at the next page. Okay, so on this problem, it looks like to me that... Um, that maybe we, it says to describe every transformation, so it needs to open up to translations and reflections as well. So I think that reflection, a reflection on, let's see, maybe the middle right here. So on the, on the line y equals negative one, we'll map this thing right on top of itself. Unfortunately, a 180 degree rotation will not work. I know that some of you might have thought about that, but the 180 degree rotation would result in this sharp corner being over here. All right, and that's all I see. So uh, we're gonna go to um, this next one and 
I think there's a line of symmetry there. So reflection on y equals 1, it looks like. And how about the middle here? Well, that would be x equals negative 2. And I don't think that there's a diagonal one. Now, if it was a square, we'd, we'd sure be able to do a diagonal one. How about a rotation? Can we do a rotation this time? Absolutely. So rotation on the point negative 2, 1, 180 degrees, right? So negative 2, 1, that's the center of the figure. That's where all the diagonals would meet. Okay, so this last one, let's see, combinations of transformations, and it says to shade your final figure. This says to rotate the polygon 180 degrees and then reflect it on the y-axis. So if I'm going to be rotating, I'm going to think about this is negative 4, 4, and I need to change both symbols. So 4, negative 4, that'll be a prime. B is negative 2, 4. Change both symbols. That's positive 2, negative 4. C is negative 1, 1, and I need to change both symbols. So that'd be 1, negative 1, C prime. And just by figuring it out, just by kind of my mind's eye kind of puts that together for me. So that is uh, D prime right here. All right, and then it says to reflect the image on the y-axis after doing that. So the y-axis reflection would result in being exactly one unit away, three units away, two units away, and then four units away. So this is our final figure. And I did it in red because it says to shade your your final answer. So <clears throat> this would be a double prime way over here. B double prime. C double prime really close to the mirror. And then D double prime is farther away. All right, and maybe I'll just add some shading. Okay. Okay, so this next one says to reflect across the Y axis. If I'm reflecting across the y-axis, then this guy needs to be put over here in the second and third quadrants. So let's go ahead and reflect. That's three units over. That's two units over. And this is seven units over. I'm going to connect my points. And I uh, feel like I connected the points incorrectly. So yeah, let's look at this again. So you have to be real careful about which points you connect, right? So those two are connected for sure. And then it goes up like this. And then across. All right. So in your mind's eye, you'll just have to ignore this little black piece here. Um, well, I guess they're all black pieces, but this little uh, piece from negative 3, 2 to negative 2, 4. All right. So anyway, the next thing we're going to do is rotate 90 degrees clockwise. So if I'm rota rotating 90 degrees clockwise, that's this direction. And I don't really share this tip too often. Um, but there is a 90 degrees clockwise rule. So I'm going to take my right hand, and uh, since I'm going clockwise, it's my right hand. I go like this, and then I negate my index finger. It's always the index finger. So 90 degrees counterclockwise, it'd be my left hand, and I negate this guy. You can still see the pin from an earlier video. But on this one, 90 degrees clockwise, I'm going to negate my 
So here we go. It's going to say y and then negative x. Now that's helpful, I guess, some, but really I kind of I kind of like the method of just thinking on the axis, off the axis. So on the axis and then off the axis. Then we do the same thing on the axis four, off the axis two. On the axis two off the axis 1, on the axis 2, off the axis 1. So this is going to be a real troublesome one, right? On the axis 7, off 2, on 7, off 2. Wow. Um, on 3, off 2, on 3, off 2. that's off on three off two on three off two let me see here okay so yes um, we're gonna connect these dots connect these these here so that I think that one's a bit um, a bit tough Okay, so you won't see something like that on a quiz or test, more than likely, okay? All right, so let's move forward to rotating something 270 degrees clockwise. Well, 270 degrees, that's just too much. Okay, that's just too much. So we're going to go, instead of going clockwise, we're going to go 90 degrees counterclockwise because that's the same thing that we could... So instead of going to the right 270 degrees, we're just going to go 90 degrees this way. So let's consider that 90 degrees, that would be on and off, so on and off, on and off three, on and off, so on, <coughs> sorry, on one, off three, on one, off three. There we go on three off three on three off three on six off one on six off one all right so there you have it let's connect those dots I know this video is getting long but uh, you know sometimes sometimes you just gotta enjoy the process and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of enjoying the process. So let's go ahead and make a translation. It says to just move this thing left three and down six. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so I've moved the bottom left point. So I'm going to move this one left three, down six. All right, left three, down six, left three, down six, and then that'll be figure, you know, let's say we start off with figure zero, this will be figure one and figure two, my first translation, my second translation and reflect across the line x equals 2. Well, x equals 2, remember, is a vertical line. So x equals 2 is way over here. So we have quite the distance between figure 2 and um, x equals 2. So let's go ahead and count that. That looks like it's 6 units over. I need to go 6 more units over. This is eight units to the left, so I need to go eight units to the right. Eight units to the right would put me at ten because I was already at two. This is also looks like eight units over, so I need to go eight more units. That puts me at ten. And then this is six units to the left, so I need to go six units to the right. Six units to the right of x equals two is actually x equals eight, right? So this red one is our final answer. Assuming that I didn't mess up anything, right? So that's our uh, final answer. We'll shade that one. 
And then we're going to write a smiley face at the end of that because we are happy with our progress that we made today. So in today's video, I showed you guys a bit on how to do rotational symmetry and also a combination of um, reflections, rotations, and translations. I hope this video helps in you trying to understand uh, transformations on the uh, in your geometry class.